Hello! In this video I want to talk a bit about these um, Tortoise Henge 3D prints that I've painted and embellished. Um, these models were, um, well the STL file was created by Kaije and he modeled it after a sketch that I'd made. I've just something that kind of popped into my head. Wouldn't it be cool to put a little Stonehenge on a tortoise? And I sketched it out and he made it happen in the form of an STL and I really like it. I think it's so cute. Um, anyway, I'll get into how I painted these guys. Um, and they're also a, a good example of our two printers. Um, you can see the finish on this one here is quite rough and this one here is quite smooth. The smooth one came off of our alpha printer which is very finely calibrated at the moment and the rough one came off of our delta printer which I often refer to as the crappy printer. But if I'm honest, I look at these two and I really like the one off the Delta printer more. I love all the the extra character that that kind of rough print gave to the model, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so yeah, it's one of those kind of happy accidents. And I got one of each because my husband was um, in the process of trying to calibrate the printers at the time that this model was released. So that's why I've got two. And I don't just have to actually have three, but I'll get to him later. So for the painting of these models, I'll just focus on this guy first. I, um, I had to clip him and file him in some places where there were supports and bits of blobby plastic hanging off. Then I primed him in a uniform color, which was gray. Um... This is what they look like when they've just been primed. It's just a thin layer of acrylic paint. Very important step to the whole painting process is that you always prime your models. And I leave mine to dry for a good day before I start painting additional layers, um, which is just my personal preference. So yeah, after that was all dry, I decided to make his body green, his shell brown, stones gray. So I blocked in those colors in kind of a mid-range for each. Next I went in and I put all the shadows in with an, a wash of acrylic paint which was dark brown um, and I also applied the wash to the green, um, the dark brown wash to bring out the shadows and kind of made them a bit more of a, a natural tortoise with um, with these greens and browns. Um, then I let that dry completely and I went on to my highlights. Now for the shell, I highlighted a white brown kind of tan mix and that brought out all of the lumps and bumps of the shell. On the stones, I highlighted them with a bit of a light gray and then afterwards I went in with a bit of a green dry brush and I added some moss and kind of, I don't know, algae to the stones. Um, for the tortoise, I highlighted him with a lighter green on his body. And then after that was all tried, I went in and I did additional um, shadow washes. Um, and after that, additional um, highlights because that's what I tend to do with all my models. I go back and forth and back and forth until I get it to the point I want. Um, there's nothing that says you have to get it right on the first try. Um, just experiment with your paints. Go back and forth if it's not the way you want it. If you're frustrated, you think you want to put it down instead of finishing it, just put it down for a day, get back to it later. It's, um, it's well worth putting the time in because you, you really end up with, with something special in the end. Um, after that was all painted, I really focused on the eyes, especially when you're if you're doing anything with a face, really. The eyes are going to make or break your model. Um, wonky eyes can just 
it doesn't matter how good your paint job is anywhere else. People are drawn to the eyes and that's all they'll see. So it actually took me quite a while, even though I'm not sure if you can see very well. The eyes are just black and white. <laughs> that's all they are. They're just black and white. And I just, I did it over and over and over again until I, I got it right where I wanted. And the eyes I painted on don't necessarily follow the eyes that were on the model on the STL. Um, but I just did them in a way that looked right to me. Um, so yeah, you don't, you don't always have to use exactly what's been printed. Um, you can definitely, you've got some wiggle room to, to make it your own special little thing. So yeah, that's basically the paint job for this guy with the other tortoise. Where is it? Here it is. Um, I used a different color scheme, but it was printed the same way. He's kind of got a purple body and a green shell. Same for the stones. So he's painted the exact same way as the other one. But to finish this one, I used a combination of sand, um, nail flocking powder, static grass, lichen, and clump foliage. And I thought it'd, it'd look quite cool for the tortoise um, if this whole area was kind of given a life of its own. The clump foliage I used is quite cool. I don't know if you can see it's actually got purple berries on it. I did not paint those on. It came that way. I really like that clump foliage. I use it on a lot of my models. I, I think it looks great. But yeah, these oh, dropped it. These were all just applied with um, PVA school glue and um, maybe a little bit of super glue. Liking can be quite um, difficult sometimes, so I have to resort to super glue. But yeah, and that's the model all finished. And there's absolutely no reason why you can't give it a shot yourself. So, oh right, I said I would get to the little one as well. The third. This is the third turtle, or tortoise. <laughs> He's just metallic. Um, he was a really choppy print off the Delta printer. But I quite like how he turned out. I wanted to do something a little wild and crazy since I made the other so natural. And um, he kind of doubles as a business card holder. We can fit a card right in here. Looks quite cool. And um, he lives on my shelf, holds my business cards. He's great. So, yeah, that's all my tortoises for now. Um, so, bye.